Good morning, class. Today, I want to go over with you um, context clues and how to look for them when you're reading um, to help you understand unfamiliar words. So there are different types of context clues that you can look for. Um, I like to use the acronym IDEAS. It's a process that you can use um, to help look for these different types of context clues, and that's what we're going to go over today. So you see that IDEA stands for inferences, definition, example, antonym, and synonym. So with inferences, what is an inference? Um, it means the meaning may not be explicitly given but you must use the clues surrounding. So in this sentence it says, you don't want to work with Ricardo unless you want to hear about, uh, I'm sorry, hear him talk about himself. He is so arrogant. So arrogant is the word that you might not know. Um, but if you see here, arrogant, if you look back at the sentence before where it says, um, you, unless you want to hear him talk about himself, Arrogant, the, the, the inferences there goes back to explain someone who um, brags on himself or talks about him uh, or herself constantly. So that's one way that you can use an inference for arrogant. The definition. Um, obviously, we all know the meaning of a definition. It's the meaning of the word um, that is explained. Um, sometimes it's in the sentence or in a surrounding sentence, uh, the, a sentence before or a sentence after. Um, in this example, we have a sentence after. Ricardo is so arrogant. He thinks he is more important than anyone else. So right here, we have right after arrogant, the definition, he thinks he is more important than anyone else. Example. An example um, of the word is in the sentence, is maybe in the sentence or in also in a nearby sentence. Um, if you don't have the definition right after, you might have an example. Regar Ricardo is so arrogant. He is always bragging about how great he is at sports. So um, this goes back to um, just like in the first example where we were looking for inferences. This is giving us an example of being um, arrogant, of being is is being you know bragging of yourself on yourself and things like that. An antonym. Um, an antonym is the opposite meaning, a word that is uh, the opposite of whatever word you don't know. Um, sometimes an antonym will be used um, before or after or maybe even in the same sentence um, to help you understand that word that you don't know. Ricardo is so arrogant. He needs to learn to be humble like his little brother, Jose. Um, so we see here the opposite of arrogant is humble. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so the opposite of arrogant is humble. And if you don't know what humble means, that means to uh, put others before yourself, not think too highly of yourself. Um, now, very say, rarely would you, you know, find a antonym right behind it, but you also have that every once in a while. And then finally, we have the S for synonym. Words with similar meanings can be used um, in the same sentence or near the sentence. Ricardo is so arrogant. Proud, self-centered, and overbearing. Um, that's another example sentence that uses synonyms right behind it.
So remember um, when you're reading, and we will be reading a lot of um, stories with the Odyssey and Romeo and Juliet and um, a cask of Amontillado, um, and they may have a lot of vocabulary that you don't know. So be sure to use these um, this acronym here and use inferences. Look for inferences. Look for um, examples, synonyms, things like that when you're reading that can help you understand this vocabulary. Um, and I just wanted to add that strong readers will always read the sentences surrounding the unknown word to look for clues. So don't forget this as you go out on um, and reading these stories that maybe um, the language may be a little different than what you are used to.